Welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy. And there you're welcome to ask me any questions that you'd like to have answered on the podcast. And I can and I can see what I can do. I can just kind of see whatever comes out. You know, and so today the episode of the podcast is entitled Why Don't People Move Forward? Why why don't we move forward towards the things that we say we want? No, if you if you're sitting there thinking, Joseph, I don't know, and if this is another one of those things where somebody's going to beat me up for all the stuff that I haven't done in my life, then I'm just going to turn it off right now. And and that's not what it's going to be at all. You know, what today is about is just because first of all, this is what I felt like I'm I'm meant to talk on today. But why why don't we move forward? Um, first of all, we're a bit hurt. You know, when we go through life, like life, life hurts. We we go like anybody that ever said, you know, sticks and stones hurt, hurts my, breaks my bones, but words never hurt me. That is the farthest thing from the truth. Whether it's what some other people say to you, whether it's things that happen to you, you know, as we go through this life, things affect us. They don't always have to stop us. They don't always have to affect us, but they do. You know where uh, where this podcast actually came from. There was there was a time that I I can't remember what I said, but basically the individual said you just have to move forward. And the other title for this pod podcast was going to be you don't have to move forward because most people don't. Most people don't like we get so stuck on something that's happened to us, or we don't get very clear on what we want. I mean. And the more times you don't get what you want, I think the harder it is sometimes to get up. You know, for me personally, like one one of the analogies is going after what you want is like, you know, going up in an airplane and you go and you go and you go and sometimes you you come right back down, you know, and, and it's like, you know, it takes energy to get that plane to go up again. Why? I think part of it is because we not only carry around with us what that will mean to us and all the amazing things that are going to come after that, but we also carry around all the times that we've tried before and failed. You know, and, and if we continue to think about all the times we've tried before and failed, instead of just getting clear on what we want, then we're not going to move forward. I know some people out there will tell you it's super helpful to focus on all the things you've messed up on and it creates this type of energy. For most people, it doesn't because plenty of those people that are going to those particular seminars where somebody's saying, hey, you got to focus on everything you messed up on. You know what you got to focus on? You got to focus on the next step. Like the tiniest next step that is right in front of you. That's what you have to focus on. Why don't people move forward? Because they think it's so much bigger than it really is. I was reading this morning in my Book of Mormon. And in there it said, you know, what a prophet named Lehi was talking to one of his sons that you know turned out to make some really bad choices. But he said, I wish you, you know, be firm and steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of the Lord. Now, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know what that means to me. What, what do the commandments of the Lord mean? They mean the very specific things that the Lord has asked us to do. So why don't we do them? Why, why don't we do the things that we're inspired to do? Why don't we run? Why don't we sprint forward in doing the things that the Lord has told us to do? Because we don't know how it's going to work out. You know, in, in that same area in the, in the scriptures, it kind of said something along those lines. Like, you know, we don't go forward because we don't understand the workings of the Lord. That's why we don't go forward. Because it's like, well, how in the world is that going to lead me to this? This is the thing that I want most. How is that step going to lead to that? 
And this is one of the things that I have probably struggled with the most. That and trying to think of the perfect next step to take. Instead of just taking, what's any step that's going to get me closer towards that goal? Any step. Yeah, you guys could probably tell. Sometimes there's a bit of frustration in my voice about this topic. Because this is the mental battle I've struggled with for so long. It's like knowing what to do and just not taking the steps. But I like that idea. Take any step in the direction that you want to go. If I take a step in the direction towards New York City, I'm going to be closer to New York City. And then another and another and another and another. A lot of steps add up to a destination. But you know what won't get you to your destination? Sitting there, sitting there doing nothing. So what? what's the other thing? Like, I mean, let, let's explore more. Like, why don't we go forward? We don't go forward because we think we have to take the perfect next step. That's never how it works. We think it's that that's how it works. We, we think there's just like this perfect little path. But if you look back at most people's journeys, they don't go exactly how they thought it would. You know, Matthew McConaughey, his book Green Lights is amazing, by the way. In his book, he, t- he tells a story of how he actually didn't go to a lot of his acting classes. He, he was in school. He wanted to be an actor, but... He instead he would drive into town to audition. Well, apparently that worked out a lot better for him because we know where he's at now. But you know when he got his break, he got his break because he was up in some high end restaurant hanging out in a bar. He he was there sitting at the bar and ended up talking to this guy who happened to be doing a movie in that area. He went on. And the the uh, director asked him to come on and just say, "Hey, like, you know, come come audition for us." And he got a small part in a movie called Dazed and Confused, which I, I haven't ever seen it. But like, he, he got a small part in that. And then from what he says in the book, he basically says there was another character, there was another actor in the movie that wasn't taking his role seriously. And as time went on in the movie, Matthew McConaughey's part grew and grew and grew. And this other other guy's shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. You know, the crazy thing about it, like, God can find somebody else to do almost anything. I mean, one one of the things that I really like understanding is, you know, even the prophet Joseph Smith, which at least in my understanding... You know, he, he was the first prophet of this dispensation in, in the church that I belong to. And there, there's a scripture that says that, you know, if Joseph Smith didn't do what he was supposed to do, that God was going to find somebody else. And so everybody is replaceable. God has a work to do and he wants you to be a part of it. And it's going to be so much funner than you could ever imagine. Okay, so let's let's talk about another reason we don't move forward. Because the adversary is real. Now, if you don't believe in that, like I mean, just think of you know, think of any of the negative voices that you've had in your head. Whatever you want to call it. I mean, I can call it the adversary, crazy leprechaun thinking, you know, kind of it, it doesn't really matter what we call it. It's all that those thoughts and feelings inside of those thoughts and things that go through our mind that leave us feeling kind of yucky. So, I mean, what do we do about that? You know what? That is probably one of the things I've struggled with as well. You know, when you're moving forward, you're moving forward and and you have a lot of noise in your head. What are you doing? Are you doing the right thing? I mean, that's probably the biggest one for me. I mean, if I could tell you how many times the Lord has absolutely confirmed to me, Joseph, right path, right path, right path. But if, but if I could tell you guys how much noise I have in my head, plenty of times. But like you start to notice it a little bit differently. 
You start to see it. You start to recognize, oh, wait, that thought doesn't feel good. I don't have to fight that thought. I just have to let that thought go. You know, the adversary actually wants you to fight him. He wants you to to go and engage, but like, well, no, that's not true because of this and this and this and this and this. So he wants you to engage. He wants you to fight. So what do we do about it? Well, we go forward anyways. And that's what it talks about in the Book of Mormon in First Nephi 8. It talks about them. They're on this path going towards this wonderful tree. And immediately after they start on their path, there's a great, exceedingly great mist of darkness. Immediately. Why? Because that's the way it works. But that crazy leprechaun thinking that adversary is super, super clever. That's why I call it crazy leprechaun thinking. A leprechaun, if I ever met one in real life, of course, it would be very clever. And it would try to keep me away from the pot of gold. It would do everything in its power to keep me away from the pot of gold that he knew it was at the end of a rainbow. Now, guys, please understand. I, I know there's not really pots of gold at the end of rainbows. I get it. But he tries to keep you away from your pot of gold. And whatever thing he has to do, he will do whatever it takes to destroy you. Or at least you to keep you away from doing any good. So what do we do? Guys, that's the one that, wow. Like I said, a lot of that is just, no, it gets noisy in your head. It really gets noisy. Even though when the Lord gives us peace about something, the adversary gives us the opposite of peace. Chaos, confusion, all of those things, all of that thinking. He really does. The only way that you can quote unquote beat the adversary is by recognizing the different feeling that you have in your body, which is usually one of discomfort, unease, just things feeling a bit off when you're thinking those thoughts versus when you're thinking the peaceful, joyful, wonderful thoughts. But Philip Phillips in his song, Home gives the counsel, pay no mind to the demons. They fill you with fear. Pay no mind. Leave them alone. There is there's no way to beat the thoughts in our head other than leaving them alone. Like attack, Going after the thoughts in our head is like pouring gasoline on a fire. They want you to engage with them. They really do. And I know for some people, this, this might be pretty far out there, but hey, guys, this is, this is what I see. And, and I see so many people get destroyed by this. Just you know, not be able to move forward because of all the noise in their head. So uh, another, uh, another thing that says basically the exact, thing, exact same thing Philip Phillips did is in that same chapter in the Book of Mormon. And he says, we heeded the knot. We paid no attention to them. We left them alone. If you don't engage with all those crazy voices in your head, then after a while, they're going to get bored and go annoy someone else. So why else don't we move forward? We're scared. We're scared of losing hope again. We're scared one more time that it's not going to work out. We're scared that, you know, we're, we're going to try and we're going to try and we're going to fail. Guys, you just have to, like, if you want to get those things in your life that you desire, you got to move forward. I mean, I want you to think for yourself, like, and please understand, as I said before, like you don't have to move forward. But if you want to get the things in your life, you got to just keep taking the next step forward. And if you don't, you're going to get to the end of your life and not have realized your full potential. And, and not have had the life that you could have had. 
All right, guys, we're, we're going to try something and just kind of see how it goes. And, and as I do this, I want you to think about the thing in your life that you've wanted to move forward towards, you're guided to move towards, and you just haven't done it. So for me, one of the things that I feel I really, really need to get back into, like get a lot more into is speaking. I mean, and I spoke like, I don't know, two, two months ago or so. It's not like I've gone a terribly t- long time without speaking. But it's something I feel very, very guided to do. You know, and, and one thought I just had, because I just got back from about, I don't know, a three-week mostly vacation, spending time with my family. Like, my family is super important to me, especially my nieces and nephews. And and so when I go back there, I, I don't work as much. And even before I left, I'd felt that I needed to start speaking more. But then in the back of my head, it's like, well, I'm going to be gone for three weeks. Like, what's the point of going and and focusing on speaking more if I'm going to be gone? Well, I mean, what I realized, and, and then I, I got home like the beginning of this week, and in the middle of next week, I'm already leaving again for another 10 days or so. You know, so it's interesting what what I'm seeing in this moment. It's interesting how much of our th- thinking is lies. You know, the the adversary, I like to call him, he, he's the lie factory. Every lie that you ever have comes from him. Every lie. Every lie, every every thought that that's a lie or, or negative or any of those things like they all come from him. Well, like I said, he gets pretty clever. You know, three weeks ago, it wasn't, well, hey, Joseph, you're going to be like, it, you know, it wasn't, uh, well, Joseph, you're going to be gone for three weeks, but then you're going to be here for 10 days. Maybe you could do some speaking in that time and set it up in advance. You know, call some, comf- call some companies and, and whatnot and, and go in and, you know, speak for them for that 10 days you're going to get back. It wasn't, you know, but it wasn't. It was like, hey, you know what? You're going to be gone for three weeks. When you get back, work on that. Work on it when you get back. You know, you'll have time then. <laughs> so it's all a lie. When, when is the best time to do anything? It's right now. Write, write that one word in your book. You know, call that one company that you're thinking of calling we got to stop worrying about doing everything perfectly because we're afraid how it's going to turn out. It, and I, I also say, like, you know, you got to get clear on what it is you want. You know, clarity is power. One of my clients, he, you know, he, he happens to spend a good amount of time each day working towards his goal and go figure. He's actually moved very quickly towards his goal. And he's had all kinds of really cool things happen in relation to that goal. Guys, what if you could spend most of your day doing the things that you love to do? Guess what? It's not watch TV. I mean, here's one of the thoughts that I had. Pick a show that you only get to watch when you've hit your, when you've put in your time. I think there's a difference between putting in time and engaging, like being anxiously engaged. That is so important. Like, and so one of the ones I've thought about doing this with is uh, Stranger Things. Because, you know, I set up this reward system and it's like, oh, okay, cool. You get a little cookie or you get, I don't know, you get this, this cool prize. I mean, the biggest prize is pretty cool, but it doesn't kind of just keep you going through the day. But if you start tying together things that you're like, you can get addicted to, it's like, you can, you can do some pretty amazing things on yourself. Can you imagine if like, for example, you were super addicted to a video game and you only played it when you'd done your time? Now I I told myself I'd do that and I I do it at times, but like there's a power in learning what motivates you. And, you know, for me personally, like I said, it's, I'm debating on doing this with uh, Stranger Things. 
I I canceled Netflix like years ago when they put on like and I haven't got it uh I haven't got it back cuz I've got you know every other streaming service known to man anyways but it's like all right well let's maybe let's pull it out and get you know get get Netflix back and start saying okay you you get this you get to watch one episode after you hit this many points we have to learn to use the exciting and wonderful things around us to serve us not to be controlled by them. Why don't... So what's another reason we don't move forward? Because we're so busy sitting around pining for the thing that we really want. You know, and I know for me, that's being with the girl of my dreams. And I know how often I, I spend time thinking about that thought. Oh, if only I had the girl of my dreams. If only... You know, everybody else has what they want, but I want the girl of my dreams. Everybody is dealing with stuff right now. Everybody. Every single person that you're talking to is dealing with stuff. And when we have to learn, we have to learn how to be this level of our life. Now I'm using... Kind of like a video game analogy. You know, if you remember, like playing I, when I was back at my nieces and nephews, we played uh, Super Mario. They played Super Mario Three quite a bit. But yes, the old one from the Nintendo, which was so fun and so nostalgic. Well, they kept wanting to go and play level the World Eight, which, if you've played Mario Three, is quite challenging. Well. They hadn't even beat that much of the... I mean, after they'd played for a little bit, they could beat some of the levels, but especially like the young, some of the youngest ones, he he wants to play World 8, and he he can barely pass most of World 1. Like, until you handle, until you deal with the challenges you're facing right now in your life, you're not going to get more. You're like, you're not going to get more of what you want. Like, you have to get super clear on what you want. Clarity is power. Like, what is it that you really, really want? You know, and and if, for example, it is a relationship, what are you doing to move forward? Like, are, are you spending time? Are you going out? Are you talking to people? Are you asking people out? And if that's not something you want, guys, I'm not here to say force you. I'm not here to say you have to. It's about what you want. This life is about what it is that you want. You know, I was watching this, uh, I think we were watching this this random like TV movie. And one of the thoughts that came to me, because, you know, there was one of the people that was, you know, super successful. And there was another man that owned a pizza shop that also looked really happy. I don't think we're going to get to the other side and Heavenly Father is going to be like, okay, here, uh, show me your net worth to see if you get into heaven. It's all about the good works that you're creating. And, and if you're struggling, if you're really struggling with the good works you're trying to create and dealing with all these things that I'm talking about today, then ask for help. One of my favorite scriptures lately has become... I think it's Philippians 4. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Christ gives us strength. He, he helps us. All these thoughts, all these, this thinking in our head, it makes half sense when we say it. But after, after a while, once we say it again, it's like, wait a second, Joseph, if you're planning on being gone... <laughs> Then you might wanna you might wanna schedule work while you're actually here. But we don't think about it in that moment. I think slowing down is one of the most powerful things that each of us can do. So I want to ask you, like, what's what's one step that you could take towards your goals, towards those things that you really really want to have happen in your life? What's just one step? Well, do you know where you want to end up? I, I know for me, I haven't got entirely clear on what I want. 
and I, and I don't remind myself of it every day. I know some of these podcasts, depending if you happen to be like, have just found this podcast and have binged from the beginning, keep in mind, this podcast started almost three years ago. So I, I've gone through some transformations. I've gone through some, you know, different things. So you're going to hear many different sides of me between, you know, and that's like 135 episodes ago, if you just started somewhere there. And sometimes I, I remind myself daily what I want, and other times I don't. I do think it is helpful to remind ourselves what we want, even if it's just for a moment. I mean, even if it's so rote and so mundane, like, okay, I am making X amount of dollars by this day. Okay. I have finished my book by this day. Okay. I mean, just, and, and just being real with you guys, I've been in a writer's group now for a little while. Well, a lot of them have finished their books and I haven't. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing more because it's sad than it's funny, but like, I too can do that. It's so important to remember every single day where you're going. Every one of us has, like, we have an expiration date on this earth. And we don't know what it is. I don't think most of us want to know what it is. You get to decide how you're going to spend your days. You get to decide what you're going to do. But it might be really helpful to just get clear and say, you know what? This is the direction I want to go. This is where I want to spend my time. I think each of us have gifts that we've been given. You know, a gift is a gift. It's not something you've earned. I, I have certain gifts that I haven't necessarily earned, like spiritual gifts. And every one of you do as well. You have gifts that were given to you so you can serve and do those things that you're meant to do in this world. I do believe that each of us are meant for wonderful, amazing, specific purposes. And I do also believe that the adversary will do everything in his power to stop us from achieving those purposes. Whatever you can do in the moment, whatever you can do today, do it. I'll, I'll add on another one though. Like, why don't we move forward? We're afraid, like, what our family will think. We're afraid what our friends might think. We're afraid what anyone else thinks. One, of my, one, one way I've lived my life for quite some time, I, there's a quote by a man named Brigham Young that says, I care about two opinions in the world, what I think of me and what Heavenly Father thinks of me. Those are the most important opinions. Who cares about anyone else? Your, your true friends will be your true friends and your others will not. You know, I remember in that, in that same TV movie, this, this girl who'd supposedly lost all of her money reached out to her friends that she had when she had money and none of them would even answer her calls. And then once, you know, she got all of her money back, they called her almost immediately those aren't really true friends. The more you focus on making yourself the best you can and serving the way God would have you serve, and even the way you want to serve, the happier you'll become. What, I mean, what, what does all of this have to do with being happy and single? When you move forward in the things you love in your life, you're going to be happier than when you don't. So what is that thing that you want to move forward on that you haven't? Write it down. Write very clearly, this is what I'm up to. And if you want to, and if it's helpful for you, read it every day. And then just take a step in each direction it doesn't have to be the perfect step. Just take a step. And I'll add one more thing. 
one reason you guys might not move forward is because you don't think you have the resources. I, one of my favorite stories about resources is I made a decision I was going to go and travel to London. And at the time I made that decision, I did not have the money. And even when I was in, when I had gotten to London, when I flew, when I flew to London, I still didn't have the money to be there. It wasn't until I was already in London that I, I'd, I had already talked to a for, like a client that owed me a lot of money, and I said, "Hey, if you pay this percentage, then you know I'll, I'll uh, call it good." And this was you know quite a while ago, but you know and he. They agreed, but they still hadn't paid me by the time I was in London. If we stop letting the things that we think are stopping us, and even inquiring of the Lord, it's like when I have that thought come in three weeks ago, that's like, hey, why don't you just work on this when you get back? Well, it sounds pretty easy. But if I would have taken that to the Lord, he might have had something different to say. Yeah, he- Heavenly Father is there and he's willing to answer your prayers. He's willing to give you the answers to your questions. You just have to ask. And so whether it's resources, no matter what it is that you need, take action in the direction that you want to go and you'll be amazed at what begins to happen. You know, Heavenly Father is there. He's as a, a a quote that I often use by Jeffrey R. Holland says, he's waiting to answer your prayers, but he can't if you don't hope. He can't if you don't dream. He can't if you don't pray. In short, he can't if you don't believe. How do we show belief? By our actions. So, start moving forward towards what it is that you want. And your life's going to start opening up more and more and more. And whatever, whatever you felt guided to do as a result of listening to th- this today, go do it. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, it's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, One of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website Happy n single.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world, then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.